Hello and welcome to Post Bag with me, Chanel Shea Calvin. And me, Lee Bannister. Well, over the next half an hour or so, we're going to be taking our regular look back over some of the highlights from this week here on Big Centre TV. Oh yes, this week we've heard from a wrestling legend. We've taken a trip to a festival in Birmingham and one of our reporters went to the smallest coffee shop in the UK. You know it's in a red telephone box? Is it? Mm. Oh gosh. <laughs> but if you miss any of the programmes, then stay tuned to find out more later on. Now, as always, if you'd like to get in touch with us, then there are plenty of ways to do so. Yes, if you are on social media, which includes Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and even YouTube, just look us up at Big Centre TV. Or if you want to send us a quick email, then it's postbag at bigcentre.tv. Or, you know, if you feel like sending us a letter, and some people actually have sent some mm. letters in, oh yes, uh, our address is postbag, Big Centre TV, 14A, Lower Hall Lane, Walsall, WS1, 1RL. Okay, well as promised, we'll kick off with a look back at some of the things we've been enjoying this week. Well, this week's edition of What If At was brought to you from the Simmerdown Festival, which took place on the 19th of July at Handsworth Park. The presenter of the programme, Rebecca Hemming, spoke with several visitors who were enjoying the festival, some of the artists that appeared at this year's event and also the participants who helped to make it a success. What's the vibe been like today? Oh, it's electrifying out there. As you can hear, my voice is struggling. Um, the crowds are so big and it's just, I don't know, I, I can't say, it's, it's a mixed crowd out there and it's really nice to be a part of it. I'm loving it, Becky. Yeah. How many people would you say out there? Well, it's hard to estimate the people, but there's a few thousand. Most I definitely. Give, give, I'm sure we'll give an inaccurate figure yeah. if we try to put a figure on it. And I think what's so lovely about it is that it's so diverse, like there's so many different people from different places. Do you know, was that part of the plan? I think it is part of the plan. That's why it's called the Birmingham Simmerdown, and it is a, it, it's for everybody. It's, it's right across the board in terms of the, I would say, the, the people that are living within the community now, because it, it's not predominantly black anymore. It really is a wide array of people. And so Simmerdown is a Jamaican phrase, right? What does that mean? For those who don't know, what does Simmerdown mean? Basically sitting down, you're cooling out and taking some good vibes. But the Simmerdown is so different from anything personally I've mm. got involved with. To me, personally, it's a perfect family day mm. where you can come out with your kids, mm -hmm. you can listen to some live band, you can listen to, you can have a picnic. Yeah. If you go down in the park, if you walk around, you see people just sitting in the park having yeah. a picnic, some is taking in the music, mm. the vibes is just right. It's, it's, a, it's a perfect gathering. Rebecca Hemmings there at this year's Simmerdown Festival. Oh, very nice. Now, Amped on Wednesday nights is our weekly alternative look at the punk, metal and rock scene with Kerrang's Johnny Doom. Now, here he is with a look at this week's music news. Hailstorm frontwoman Lizzie Hale has recorded guest vocals for a cover of the Rolling Stones' Give Me Shelter on Stone Sour's upcoming EP. And vocalist Corey Taylor has unveiled the bands they're going to cover on the two releases to follow this year's Meanwhile in Burbank sessions. Uh, guitarist Josh Rand says a big thank you to Lizzie for killing it on this track. It sounds amazing. Uh, the second EP is entitled Straight Out of Burbank. Uh, nice reference there. And includes Give Me Shelter along with uh, material by Iron Maiden, Slayer, Motley Crue, Bad Brains and more. Uh, a video surfaced last Thursday of a thousand musicians dubbed the Rocking 1000 playing the Foo Fighters hit Learn to Fly as a way of asking the band to come and play in Cesena uh, or something like that in Italy. Uh, Foo Fighters responded via their Twitter account writing Che bello Cesena uh, which translates to how lovely Cesena. Uh, the band, however, did not commit to performing in the town. Johnny Doom there. And the next edition of Amped is on Wednesday night. Now, in this week's What's On, Chanel met Irish singer-songwriter Tom Martin, the founder of Tower of Song. And also Andrew Fowles from Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery came in to talk about some of the great events they're organising throughout August. Well, across all of Birmingham Museums Trust, um, we have lots of different heritage sites in our major museums. So we have the Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery. Mm -hmm. We also have Think Tank. And we have some beautiful heritage sites, which are smaller museums, such as Soho House, which is based down in Handsworth, at Blakesley Hall, Aston Hall, and we also have Sayre Hole Mill. And they're wonderful, wonderful little museums, and including the Museum of the Jewelry Quarter, mm -hmm. that's based right in the heart of the Jewelry Quarter. Uh, and they're beautiful, really closely together, so people can really make an opportunity to see multiple museums in a day. 
And um, we've got lots of special offers to go with alongside of all of those things, really. You do, because like, I've had a look at some of your events as well, and I love the fact that they're quite interactive, so people aren't just going into the museum just to walk around. They can actually just yeah. get their hands dirty and sort of just join in with all the fun as well. That's it. Well, the start of the summer holidays really mean a mix of all different audiences that come together, and we want to be able to host everyone in every different way for the beauty of our collections, for the arts and crafts activities, and something a little bit different. Andrew Fowles there from Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery. And for the full interview, check out our catch-up service on the website. Now on our sports chat show, Extra Time, Gary James went and risked his life and went to meet the wrestling legend, Banger Walsh. Well, when I say risked his life, they kind of sat on a bench on a golf course and had a nice chat. Let's listen in. While at school, how, how did you get into the world of wrestling then? Because I think it was boxing that you... Well, started I, off it. I boxed amateur for Leamington Boys Amateur Boxing Club, yeah. which produced Randolph Adolphus Turpin in 1951, who went on to become the world middleweight champion. Yeah. And I'm very proud of the fact he comes to me a boxing fanatic. I was very proud to come out of that club. Mm. And uh, I had a quite a hard beginning into that way of life because I was a bit of a little of a, I am, I am, I am. Yeah. And uh, this one kid said he was going to knock me down a peg or two. And I said, yeah, come on then. And we, so we spoke to the master at the school. Warwick, yep. And I said, we're going to have a square go, me and him. <laughs> and we did, and he knocked me from <laughs> Was this the Polish lad? He knocked me Polish out. <laughs> he knocked me from Billy the Post. So I thought, oh, damn this for a game of soldiers. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm out of it. Like, So um, I boxed amateur for a few years mm. uh, with Lemons and Boys. Uh, and then I left school. Now, have you enjoyed Tom Cruise's Mission Impossible films? Oh yes, I love them, they're great. Yeah, they're oh, yeah, pretty yeah. good, aren't they? Yeah. Well, the fifth one, Rogue Nation, is doing really well at the box office at the moment, and part of the film's success is down to the determination of 53-year-old Tom Cruise to do most of his own stunts, even hanging off the side of an aeroplane. I wouldn't do that. Wouldn't you? No? I, I think I'd give it a choice to be fair. Would you? I probably would. <laughs> well, Carl Jones featured it on Bobby Wood Jammy Woods on Friday night. Hang a multi-million dollar star on the outside of an aeroplane and fly around in the normal world. But Tom wanted to be on the outside of that plane. I couldn't sleep the night before. And then came the day. I was like, okay, that's really gonna happen. You ready? Practice. Let's go. And I kind of thought that was a one take, but he did it eight times. If something went wrong, I can't get into the airplane until we land. Okay guys, please take your seats. There's no little crash and a scratch. You're dead. Ready! On. I'm feeling the force of the wind hit me. I'm actually scared of this. Did that look? Did a bit. Hanging off for dear life, wasn't it? Yeah, it could be like you could be flying next to an aeroplane. Okay, I still wouldn't do it. You're still not convinced? No. Oh, gosh. You have a go next week. I think. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yes, Lee, Little Liam are a local band who appeared on this week's Cup of TV. And here they are with their song, Lonely People.
more from little Liam a little later on. Okay, that's it for part one, but don't you go anywhere because after the break, we're going to be taking a look at some of this week's news stories, sharing your comments, and uh, we're also going to be telling a couple of jokes. Uh, why? Ah, well, you're going to have to tune in, uh, come back and find out after the break. And welcome back to Post Bag with me, Shanae Shea Calvin. And me, Lee Bannister. And now we said to you before the break that we're going to tell you a joke. And that's because the team from In Our House had their very own joke time and we thought that we would too. So, what's your joke? Uh, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I think it's best that we get some inspiration first. What's the best day to go to the beach? Sunday. What does the sun drink out of? sunglasses what did the ocean say to the beach nothing it just waved what do sheep do on a sunny day they have a bar bark you where do sharks go on holiday finland how do you prevent a summer cold capture in the winter what do sharks eat for dinner fish and chips which letter of the alphabet is the coolest ice tea what's black and white and red all over a sunburnt penguin. Where do cows go on holiday? New York. What do frogs drink on a hot summer day? Croak a cola. Sorry, <laughs> 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 I've got a job. Oh, yeah, yeah, go on then. Here we go. This um, will be good. <laughs> why, is, <laughs> why is six scared of seven? I don't know. Why is six scared of seven? <laughs> because seven, eight, nine. <laughs> No. Did you get that? Oh, I think oh that's dear. Really funny. Here we go, here we go. I've got one for you. What do you call a three legged donkey? I don't know what you call a three legged donkey. It's a wonky? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, there's, there's one over there. Come Go on. on what did the pirate say when he turned 80? I oh, don't know. What, what did, did the pirate, pirate say when he turned 80? 80? Oh, matey. <laughs> that actually was a bit funny. No, I found that one funny. <laughs> did you? That did. Okay. Come on, your turn. Oh, well, now <laughs> it's time to have a look into the Oh, we need these, don't we? Oh, here <laughs> we go. Yes, now, um, oh, yeah, Graham Arnold, a previous guest from Extra Time, has been in touch to say, Hi, guys, could you let Gary know from Extra Time that I've raised almost £3,500 for Birmingham Children's Hospital? Well, we've passed that on to Gary, and he's said, uh, Congratulations, and uh, make sure you keep us updated with your progress. Oh, well done. Nice one, well, yeah, it's good news, that, yeah. Now sticking with our sports show Extra Time, presenter James Brackpool took a trip to the Women's Boxing Club and they actually got in touch with us to say that it was a fantastic show and well done to all involved and thank you to Big Centre TV. Oh yes, nice isn't it? it yes, is. that was a good show that was. Now if you've ever joined our favourite bear Boston and his friends, then you may have seen one of our programmes called uh, Henry Egg. Well the team behind the programme are, wait for it, Extremely pleased to report that the limited edition book, The Adventures of Shelly Egg, has nearly sold out. So if you want to get your hands on one of them, then uh, hurry as there are some still available in the Symphony Hall gift shop. That's good news, isn't it? It really is. Oh, yes. But don't forget, you can see The Adventures of Henry Egg every day at 7am and then Mondays to Fridays at half past 12 as part of the Boston Bear Club. We love Boston Bear. You <laughs> love Boston Bear, don't I really you? do. Yeah, he's a good mate. <laughs> <laughs> now let's take a look at what has been featured in this week's news. Well, world-renowned goods made throughout Warsaw Borough are now on display at Warsaw Leather Museum. Locks, jewellery, brightly coloured plastics and stainless steel teapots are amongst the highlights in, in the changing face of Warsaw, an exhibition exploring and celebrating the development and history of the borough. But Monica Plaha spoke to senior curator Mike Glassin to find out more. We're trying to tell something of the story of Warsaw. Warsaw's obviously a great manufacturing centre, so we've got things made by local craftsmen and craftswomen. We've got some amazing items made in stainless steel. Warsaw produced the world's first stainless steel teapot, the first stainless steel tableware. We've got some amazing things in plastic. We've got incredible things going right back to the Middle Ages uh, for bits and stirrups and spurs for horses when Warsaw was a great centre for horse manufacture in the 15th and 16th centuries. So we, we cover that side. We've also reflect Warsaw as a great centre of transport 
Uh, Warsaw's quite a hub on canals, motorways, roads, trams, railways, so we're reflecting that as well. Um, and then as you can see in this showcase here, we've got a big collection of costume um, which we've acquired over many years. And we've got probably the most important collection in the country of working class costume from about 1920 to 1960, which came from an amazing shop in Willenhall run by two sisters. They never threw anything away, so if anything didn't sell, they just put it in a back room. And when they died, we found this amazing collection of hundreds and hundreds of dresses and items of costume. So some really important stuff. I mean, it all looks so interesting. And specifically, what does it tell us about the history of the borough? I think it shows that Warsaw's evolved, Warsaw's changed continually, that it's had to adapt, that industries have come and gone, people have come and gone. Uh, Warsaw's always been a town that's um, accepted new people and there's a very strong history of uh, immigration into the town and new cultures coming in. Um, and it shows that Warsaw's a very old town. I think many people driving around Warsaw could be mistaken for thinking Warsaw's a creation of the 19th and 20th centuries, but it shows that Warsaw goes right back into the Middle Ages. Warsaw was an important industrial centre, even by the, by the 15th century. And um, I know I can hear you've got some kids in already. Mm -hmm. um, summer holidays, how are the kids finding it? We've got well, lots of activities on for children, so we've got lots of um, little tours and quizzes, and they have to try and find things as they go around the museum. So we try to work very hard, we try to put things in, in the exhibition that we think are going to entice the children and interest them. And one of the things just over there is um, Skull's Bridal, which is a rather horrible thing that was used for um, punishing women who were thought to be gossips or skulls and they were locked into this cage-like thing and then paraded around the town. So that's rather macabre, but children love things like that. This exhibition is on until October. Now, Birmingham's smallest coffee shop opened this week in a red telephone box. Aww. Oh, yes. 23-year-old Jake Hollier is the first person to rent one of the Birmingham phone boxes from a trust called Thinking Outside the Box. Do you like what they did there? I do, actually. <laughs> now, they granted permission to turn them into uh, kiosks. Jake's Coffee Box is located in Eden Place near Cornwall Row, and it serves teas, coffee, cakes and sausage rolls. Now, our reporter Monica Plaha spoke to Jake to find out more. A coffee shop in a telephone box. What's this all about? Uh, it's, I don't know. People have been asking me this all day. Um, it all started when I kind of left school with just my GCSEs and I didn't really know what I wanted to do in my life so I just went and got a job straight away um, but I knew I always wanted to be self-employed uh, and it kind of just went from there I was walking through town one day I live in the jewelry quarter I was walking through town saw that they were up to rent contacted the company um, and then just yeah went from there called them said oh what's it all about what can I do with them and they suggested the coffee idea and I thought that's a really good idea because I do like coffee that is a really good idea so let's just let's go from there and so it's your first day of opening today. How's it going? It's been <laughs> interesting. It's been no one will come and then all of a sudden a million people will turn up at once. It's been so crazy. But yeah, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. People have really had really responded well to it. So what has the response been like? What are people saying? People just think it's mental. People just see it like, it's a British icon and they would have went to waste of always. Um, so this is a good way to sort of recycle, recycle it and don't let it go to waste. And is there any other concept like this? Have you heard of any other concept um, like this? There is one in Brighton. I did mm. go down there two weeks ago, but he's got two. Um, whereas this is one. So this is officially Britain's smallest coffee shop. Officially. Officially. Yeah. And how does that make you feel? Proud. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and so what are you know, your future plans? Are you going to keep this open for a long time? Uh, it's got free early lease and um, there is four more along this road. I would log all of them. I would definitely log all of them eventually, but we'll see. We'll see. You're going to see how today goes and then yeah, hopefully... Yeah, I don't want to jump in the deep end just yet. We'll just see how today goes. And what have you got on offer here at the shop? Uh, well, and we've got all these espresso-based products. So we've got your lattes, your cappuccinos, food. I've sourced some fantastic sausage rolls from this farm in Shropshire. Um, there's even a great vegetarian option, like a vegetarian, not sausage roll. But it's like spinach and Bombay potatoes. It's brilliant. Um, and yeah, some pastries. So got some cold drinks. Gonna have some hot chocolate on sale. Gonna have lots of seasonal products. It's right by the German market, so we'll see how it goes. See how it goes. And what do you think this initiative brings to the region itself? This is great because I always say every time I go to Brighton, every time I go to London, it's full of independence. It's like full of really crazy stuff. And I thought Birmingham doesn't lack 
necessarily independent, but there's not as many, and there's definitely room for a lot more. So this is why. That is another one of the reasons why I wanted to do this. That looked pretty cool. Yeah, it did. Nice bit of Elvis as well, playing oh, all the way through that. Yeah. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Now, earlier in the show, we saw the local band Little Liam perform on this week's Cup of TV. Well, here they are again with Nothing No One Know How. with their song, Nothing, No One, No How. Oh, I really enjoyed that. It was a good it one. It was good, was. wasn't it? OK, that's your post bag for this week. But don't forget, if there's anything you want to talk to us about, then on social media, which is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even YouTube, just look us up at Big Centre TV. Or if you want to send us an email, then it's postbag at bigcentre.tv. And if you want to actually write to us, our postal address is postbag, Big Centre TV, 14A, Lower Hall Lane, Walsall, WS1, 1IL. Well, I'll be back with What's On on Monday night at 7. And I'll also, also be there on uh, What's On and on Crossroads Check-In too. And Postbag will be back at the same time next week. So I'll see you then. Sure, a bit.